I thought maybe I'd just kind of give you guys an introduction on uh, kind of my experience in the sport and we can take it from there. So I found arm wrestling when I was very little. The first time that I found arm wrestling, I was probably around five years old. My grandmother was like the best woman arm wrestler on the oil fields in Canada. So the story goes. Okay, she used to come over to my place, our place, and my reward for going and picking her apples for the apple pies that she used to bake was to, I got to arm wrestle it. And for me, that was a really big deal. Uh, even from like the age of five, I, I fell in love with the feeling that arm wrestling gave me. You know, that feeling where you can go as hard as you want, and it's just kind of a, a place of freedom. And, and that's really, that's really why I love arm wrestling, and that's what I've held on to throughout my whole career. I arm wrestled with my friends through public school every chance I got. I arm wrestled through high school every chance I got. I did it wrong the whole time. I was just, I was turn and burn, right? Just, I was bend your wrist and go to the side. Nothing wrong with that, but that's all I knew back then. Um, I, I loved arm wrestling probably more than the rest of my friends but it was just a small part of what I did. I like to play basketball, I like to weights, all the normal stuff. I went and worked in the oil field. I was 18 and my boss was a guy called Dion Langell. The dude was like a walking Canadian Wolverine, for real. He was like five foot seven, like 165 pounds of perfection, okay? The guy ran around the shop like fire and he was the most functionally fit human being I may have ever met in my life. Uh, everybody in the oil field arm wrestling, everybody. We were all like, there was, there was probably 500 guys in the shop between 18 and 25, and we all arm wrestled. And even from a young age, I could beat almost all of them. None of us knew what we were doing. And every time I beat somebody, it was, yeah, well, you can't beat Dion. And so I harassed this guy like crazy. I harassed him, I was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. He didn't have time for me. I was an amateur, he didn't have time for me. Eventually one day, I caught him after work, he was on his way out, I was like, Dion, let's go. And he took me to the cafeteria, and he just destroyed me. He destroyed me every way I could imagine. And I was strong. I loved fitness my whole life. I was probably like a 190 pound farm kid just made a sinew. I was strong, but I could do nothing with this guy. And as we all know, we've all been arm wrestling a while. We know how that goes, right? The guy who's never lost, that's the easiest guy to beat. And, unless your name's Dennis Seplankoff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it was, so he crushed me. He crushed me. Uh, and there was one time I was going so hard that I almost broke my arm and he let me win. He let me, I know he did. But I held on to that and the next day at work, I told everybody that I beat him. And uh, you know, I was 18, bit of, a, bit of an idiot. And you know, he kind of made a bit of an example of me, but I think he saw a little spark in me and he decided to train me up. He, I was like his punching bag. He was getting ready for Russian, uh, Russian Bear, the, the Golden Bear. You guys might have heard of that tournament. Famous tournament, one of the biggest tournaments in the world at that time. That was like 1994, okay? It's a long time ago. Uh, some of you probably weren't even born. Uh, anyways, um, so this was like a real turning point for me. I met like a real arm wrestler, somebody who understood the techniques of arm wrestling. So 1994, so at that time, I really started to understand how much I really loved arm wrestling because it opened up a totally different side of the sport to me, the technical side, the understanding this was much more than just what I thought it was. This was a time pre-internet and it was a time where you had to find somebody. You had to find somebody who actually knew what they're doing. There was no videos, you couldn't go on, there was no YouTube. You couldn't go online, you had to know people. You had to find people. Arm wrestling was like a flyer that you'd get because you knew a guy and then you'd go to the event and somebody hand you a flyer and you'd go to the next event. And uh, 
And then I moved back to Ontario, and I found in my own town where I grew up, they had an arm wrestling club. Everything was so underground. A little bit, it, arm wrestling's still underground, but it's, it's, it's better. So, at that point, I was doing many sports. I was involved in judo, I was playing basketball, uh, I was doing long distance uh, running events, but everything, I knew that arm wrestling was gonna be the one, and I just started to cut, 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 until I was basically only arm wrestling. I made it my goal, and I told everybody, even from a young age, uh, well, young age in arm wrestling, people asked me where I was going, and I said, I'm gonna win a world championships. I, I said, I'm gonna be, I wanna be the best in the world. Uh, people used to laugh at me, people used to think it was crazy. Uh, and back then, there was no real money, okay? Like, there really wasn't. There was no money, uh, there was nothing, okay? Uh, but I knew how much I loved this sport. I loved the feeling of it, I loved the purity of it, I loved the accessibility of it. Uh, I, loved, I loved that it was so simple, but at the same time, you could take it as far as you wanted to go in complexity. Every day of my life since I was, since I basically met with Dion, every day of my life, arm wrestling has basically been, it's, it's embarrassing to say, but it's basically been my number one priority, okay? At the cost of many things in my life. Um, yeah, people, uh, and it didn't make a lot of sense. Like it didn't, my wife, uh, we've been together since high school, okay? Jody and I have been together a very long time. She's been through everything, she's seen everything. And I think at the beginning it didn't make sense to her. It didn't make sense that I would allocate so much time and energy to something that, you know, potentially didn't, didn't make a lot of sense. Um, but it changed, it changed like, I got to a point where I was, I was actually getting pretty good. Like I won, I was probably the best guy in the country uh, when I was around 25, 26. And arguably at that point, it didn't take long before I was getting internationally recognized. Won a world title, number one ranking, I think I was 32. Uh, still at that point, Arm wrestling didn't make sense from any, for any reason other than what it gave me. It didn't make any sense. Uh, arm wrestling was still extremely small. I had no sponsors, no ability. Arm wrestling gave me no freedom. Arm wrestling just gave me the feeling, that same feeling that I had when I was five. That was the only reward that I got. Um, things changed around 2013, 14. The arm wrestling world, for whatever reason, just became a little bit riper. Uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, these last five years, arm wrestling's come further in the last five years than it has in the previous 20, in my opinion. Uh, gone are the days when I meet somebody and they find out I'm an arm wrestler and they're like, what's that? It doesn't happen anymore. Uh, people know about arm wrestling. People recognize arm wrestling. People sponsor arm wrestlers. People kind of know that we are an emerging sport. I believe very strongly within the next three to five years, we will be on the same course that the UFC was on. Um, yeah, so I mean, so arm wrestling for me has been through my life forever and I, will say that it will likely be with me until the end. It plays a special part in my life, um, but when you boil it all down, it's just for the feeling it gives me. If it wasn't for that feeling, I, I probably wouldn't do it. It's uh, all the things that uh, most sane people are looking for in the sport, they're coming now. Like money, opportunities, uh, you know, all the extra stuff that being good at something uh, can give you, it's, it's all coming now. But, but really, I mean, I think the reason probably everybody's here tonight is because of the feeling that you get from it, okay? So, 
That's really what I want to focus on. I want to share this with everybody. I want to have good training with you guys. Uh, so for tonight, we'll focus on really the core principles of good practice, okay? And really great arm wrestling training is done with other people, right? You can get strong in the gym, okay? And we can talk about that, how to get strong in a gym. It's a big part of arm wrestling. It's a big part of your advancement in the sport, what you do with weights. Um, but really, what we do with each other is so much more. Um, so senior person holds, junior person works, stay in good position. Kind of a rule that I like to follow when I, when I arm wrestle. If I can get one, one person just to come up, just to show how we'll do most of the practicing for the night. Okay, so wherever, good, here we are, all right? So Ben chose to came, come forward and I've chosen to come back a little bit. When I say forward, he's brought his shoulder forward, he's trying to get, uh, he's trying to attack my hand, look at his shoulder position, it's superior. I'm kind of pulling up into his fingers, okay? So this is great. So we've got kind of a stop position. We can play in this position. Now, if either one of us starts to feel control, like if we start to feel comfortable, I think that a really nice thing to do is to switch, okay? So what that means is if I start to feel control, so my top roll has been set as my defense, just in the way that we interact, okay? So this is my defense. If we ever go harder, go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go hard on my top roll, okay? Now, but if I start to feel like I can advance, I'm gonna advance, oh, there we go. Now I got in, okay? So, once I, so now I have control on the inside, right? And I've crossed over, so I start coming forward. If I start to feel control here, I'll offer it back up outside, okay? And that's what I wanna, that's what I want you guys to, to work on. Good table practice, good arm wrestling, really good solid ability on the table means you have the ability to come forward and back with your shoulder. Switch to inside, get control, switch to outside. That's how you know you have full domination on a person. And if you stay in the middle and go slow, nobody's getting hurt, everything's good. Yeah. Do, we, do you guys have any questions before we, we get started and play around? Ask me anything at any time, guys. We'll work out for probably like 20 minutes. We'll stop again, take a break, work out. That'll be the flow. Yeah? Cool. Sure. So for me, arm wrestling is all about strength and, and you know, doing it the right way. Okay, when I train for arm wrestling, uh, I, it's become very simple. I used to do, when I, when I first got involved with arm wrestling, uh, my coach had me do just a very few exercises. All right? I, basically, when I first started arm wrestling, the only real arm wrestling training I was doing was on a preacher, and I was doing these you know, rocking locked preacher curls. And that was kind of the foundation on what all of my arm wrestling was built. We did a little bit of wrist stuff, but not, not much. It was basically we did lock preachers. And then the more I met different arm wrestlers and talked to them, they were like, no, arm wrestling is this, no arm wrestling is that. And so what I did just grew and grew and grew because everybody that I talked to, I tried to take and, uh, and add to my game. And what happened was after like, 10 or 12 years in the sport, I was doing like 100 exercises, okay? It was, it was way too much. Uh, the longer I stayed in the sport, the more I started cutting things, cutting things, cutting things. I learned that even though all these things are a part of arm wrestling, there's a few things that are really, really important. And I tell everybody that I feel like it's four things. Four things are what you should focus on above everything else. And everything other than these four things is just a little bit here and there as required. Never ever stop training your post, okay? This ability to rise up, this rising application, anybody who's been on the table feels it. Anytime you have that ability to have that high hand, 
It's amazing. It doesn't matter if you're short. It doesn't matter if you're tall. If you have more rise, it's always to your advantage. It's a small strength and it's not really going to pin people, but it's going to set up the technical advantage for all other moves to have success and it's going to give you efficiency. So rising, it's, it's massive. Cupping, this whole cupping chain, right? Through the wrist, bringing things to your center, okay? Bringing things to your center. This makes all your moves more efficient as well. Anything that's closer to you, you can control more. It's very simple. And it's the strongest, really, it's probably the strongest group in the forearm. So it's, it's, it's especially important. Pronation, pronation. And, and, and when you think about all these strengths, it's really about the negative cycle, okay? It's really about how much can you stop from uh, knocking your hand down or peeling your hand open or turning your hand over. This is what's really important for an arm wrestler. So pronation or stopping your hand from being turned over or working with a belt or a towel, okay? Uh, last one is supination. Supination, bringing the match inside your body. This is what arm wrestling is. These four things, you can train them every single day. As long as you don't hurt yourself and do like crazy numbers, you can do it every day. You can do it multiple times a day. Rep range. For the most part, if you're an arm wrestler and you're healthy, you should be lifting heavy. The, the times you don't is maybe the day after a good table session or if you're hurt. And this is a big reality for arm wrestlers. You're gonna get hurt at different stages of your career. You're gonna get tendonitis. You're gonna have joint issues. It's just, it's like our problem in our sport, okay? It's one of the things that we have to learn how to overcome. I've had joint issues throughout my career at times. Right now I'm healthy so I can lift heavy. And when I lift heavy, that means I do triples for periods, I do tens for periods. And when I wanna get strong, I don't touch things more than 10 times. Um, now, I can't do it every day, but that's pretty much my routine. It's very simple, threes and tens. Now, how do you get healthy? How do you get healthy when you have tendon issues? I'll say that the number one supplement that's helped me more than anything is just drink fish oil like it's water. Uh, if you got tendonitis, you get liquid fish oil and you drink it like every time you go to the fridge, like take a shot. I know they say only take two to three grams a day. I'm telling you, take two to three shots a day. Like, and that's no problem. I'm serious. And, and, and whatever you have with your tendon issues, I will tell you, I am very sure it's going to be accelerated. Um, and you have to, you have to uh, direct fluids where the injury is. Your body is like, it's really good at what it does, but it's, it's lazy still. So you have to really listen to your body. You have to never be mean to your body. As soon as you have your goals in place and your goal is strength and your goal is arm wrestling, your, body's gonna, your body is going to feel good chasing that goal. So when you lift heavy weights, it's going to feel good. It's, and, and, and that's what you should listen to. But when you get hurt, it's not going to feel good. But that doesn't mean stop. That means find a way to make it feel good. And the way, the way you make it feel good is you find where the pain is and you work with it. You work with it with movement. And it should never ever be a sharp pain. Never be a sharp pain. But you should feel it and be conscious of it. And that little bit of awareness uh, and, and directing the fluids where to go is gonna accelerate your healing like crazy. If you just rest an arm wrestling issue, it might take you, no kidding, it might take you a year and a half to get your side pressure back. First time I blew my arm, I think it was 1998 against Earl Wilson. I thought about it for six months. Uh, finally, I got this guy on the table and I'm like, and I jumped into a press and I beat him and stretched out the inside, blew my inside completely. Just a touch here hurt. I rested it. I didn't touch it. And I was a young man. I was like 23. 
I'm 23 years old. I should have bounced back in a few weeks. I didn't. It took me a year and a half of top rolling. You know, I just, I just top rolled. I never tried to rehab it. Finally, after like a year and a half and it's still hurting, I'm like, geez, I'm just gonna kind of go through the pain a bit. Two weeks later, it was fine. <laughs> now, now, whenever I get hurt, I just, I just find the pain and I work with it. And now tendon issues, joint issues for me, it's like a couple weeks. Honestly, sometimes it's just a couple days. Like, you can heal this stuff. Uh, they say that tendons and ligaments don't have blood flow. This is completely false. It's completely false. Tendons and ligaments only have blood flow when they're moved. That's the key. They have pumps inside them, okay? They only, they only feed when they move. So this is what you gotta do. You gotta move your injury. Uh, the one that's so common for everybody, and I'll just kind of, if you have trouble finding your injury, it's a really good chance if you've just been arm wrestling like less than five years, it's a really, really high likelihood that it's from supination or side pressure. Side pressure and supination are really closely related. Like when people start to arm wrestle and they start to realize that they got a groove here when they bring their shoulder forward, things start happening really well, okay? People start to feel that and they'll blow it. Um, but supination, supination is actually gonna correct your form a lot. Like supination is bringing the match inside your body as opposed to just going to the side, okay? So supination is advancing your position but it's really tied in a side pressure. If you go like this and it hurts, this is probably a side pressure injury. And so you just, like, this kind of thing is great. So have weights here and just do your curls like this. All right, do this like reps 25 to 50 for multiple sets. Just get a good pump and you're gonna accelerate your healing. It'll come back even stronger, okay? After a few years of tendonitis and stuff like that, you're gonna be able to smash presses and that won't be a problem anymore. Okay, um, I wanna talk about really quick just how I think about arm wrestling. Uh, technique wise, it'll open up the next part of what we do. There's only a few things that I really think about when I arm wrestle. I think of a lot about shoulder. Uh, the shoulder to me is really a big part of the arm wrestling game. Just because it's a more simple thing to understand. It's basically you can divide all arm wrestling into forward movement and backward movement. A person's either coming at you or they're coming away from you. And it's these central ideas that you should think about to advance your game at, at, at a certain point of your experience. And these two ideas, uh, you know, people talk about technique, top roll, hook, press. You're either coming at a person or you're coming away from them at the very root of it. And there's all sorts of techniques that fall into this spectrum. But at the far outside, like when I run away as far as I can, I think that the farthest run and move we got right now is a king's move, all the way out, okay? That's, that's me just holding on to my pronation and just twisting as hard as I can. And, and on the other side of the pyramid, uh, you know, I'll go through, I'll go through the high hook, the low hook, the drag, the press, all the way to the flop. And that's all I care, I give everything away but I'm just coming forward. I'm coming forward at all costs. I'll give everything away, but I am coming forward. And all these moves are great. They're all great. So what, what the way you think about these moves, and, and these moves get tied together, the, the one way you think about it outside is you just want to be chased all the time. And it's a funny game. Like, if you want to really fall in love with arm wrestling and be crazy, like, I just play these games all the time and in my mind, I just kind of bounce between them all the time. So like, um, like I'll get people to chase me. So I'll be like, take grip, man. Let's go take grip. See that, all right? <laughs> Come on, grip up, all right? So he, I've got him, right? He chased me, he came to me and right away I got him by the fingers, okay? Uh, another one, so I'll be like, all right, let's go, right? Let's go, right? See, I'll be like all over him. I'll be all right past him. 
Okay, and it's these two ideas that I'm always playing with. Being past a person and making a person chase me. These two ideas are central to winning arm wrestling. And the other one is, is a more aggressive game. And that's where you actually beat a person to the spot. You beat them on that shoulder angle. Does everybody understand that shoulder angle? I talk about it a lot in my seminars. Yeah. How does that shoulder angle go? How does it go? Come on, let's, let's talk about it. Because it's so important, it's really important. Right? You guys see the shoulder angle, right? It's a line. His shoulder and his hand, they cut into my arm. This, he's got a lot here, right? He's got a ton. Now, whenever I set up, if I want this, right? Okay, and I will, I'll, I'll play with both these ideas. But let's say, for whatever reason, I've decided the key is gonna be to beat his shoulder, okay? I'm gonna play this little game, okay? There's a few things that I can do. All right, so you can play the same game with me if you like. So one of the things that I love to do, if I'm gonna arm wrestle somebody and if I wanna be tough in the setup, is no matter what, I'll push them off center. Okay, so here we are. All right, we're gonna arm wrestle. Instead of me trying to take my grip right away, see, as soon as I even come into this, I'm like less efficient. He's got the efficiency on me right away. So here I am and I'll push you, right? And then there I go, okay? So right away, so I'm gonna control the center and I'll push him off, right? I'll push him off, that way I control the center, right? So he has to, he looks silly right now, right? Like take a grip, man, the, the center is like clearly over here. And then, right? And then another one that I can do is I can approach from height. Approaching from height means that you have depth, right? So it's like this, so we're gonna arm wrestle, right? So see here? From, from height, and then I and then I get my I, my drag chops, chops down on that. right because this is the real strength to the inside drive is the connection piece. The connection is stronger than the side. People think that a lot of the opening is with side. It's actually not. The side should already be established. You should already have your shoulder position in the set. So then all you do is you do your connection. This is the strongest thing you can do. It's the most anatomically sound. Everything's great, all right? From here, there we go. See, I've got the shoulder position, and ready to go, boom. Everything's better. If he ever brings his shoulder forward, I've already got him beat on the angle, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until he breaks his arm. That's the whole thought behind, behind inside arm wrestling. You got him beat on the angle, if they want to keep coming forward, it just gets worse and worse and worse. So they're forced into going outside, and you have depth. All right, so this is like thinking about inside and outside. So outside is making somebody chase you. Knowing that they are gonna have to be the ones to hold on to you. You don't hold on to anything in life, right? This is, this is not gonna be a strong position. You hold on to anything, it's not a strong position. The real strength is making people chase you, okay? And you do that by belief that if nobody's holding on, you can hit into nothingness and your hand will come out on top, okay? And it's a very, very important thought that you have to be secure in. The other one is just getting past the person, getting past them with height and getting, getting that connection. And this is really all that arm wrestling is. Inside, outside, making people chase you. And if they bring their shoulder forward, they're gonna break their arm because you have better depth. <laughs> yeah. And after that, it's just hand advancement, okay? So, so much, so much of, of what, what you do outside of those ideas is just advance these hand lines. This line here. It's the same on both sides. He has one and I, and I have one, right? It's the same line, okay? And what you're looking at is you're looking at, so if he wants to get higher up, okay, this line has to come up. This is where he's going, okay? He's not going to the pin line. He's just going up my hand. Not only is he going up my hand, he's going deeper. 
Okay? When you think about where do you want to go on the arm wrestling table, forget about chasing that. Extend the person, yes, but get further around them and have them not be as far around you. You do that, you're going to win matches. You're going to be more efficient. That's like the base of how I think about arm wrestling. You guys got any questions on, on that? You want me to go into more depth? Yeah, I'd like to remember that one more. Yeah. Which one? The, the hands? Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so the hands, there's a lot of things that are, that are important. But let's say everything is like totally fair. Totally even, bang, okay? Totally fair grip, close the thumbs, close the hands. All right, let's say neither one of us is going for slip or any kind of crazy shoulder stuff. So much of just straight hand control is let's say the first thing is cup. Just cup. Yeah, you gave me a little bit of pronation there too. Oh. <laughs> right, okay, so we're just, see we're both cut. Okay, both cut. Okay, now let's both just pronate, nice and light. Good. See that, so that's pronate, that's cut. Okay, so really full hand control is a combination of cupping and pronate. There we go. Cupping and pronating. That's your full hand package. Okay? The more he is up in this line, the more easy it's going to be to pronate. The more um, he's past my thumb line, the easier it is going to be to cup. Okay, so it's just a relationship. Cupping and pronating have a very strong relation. My cup is his pronation. His cup is my pronation. Okay, so these things have a relationship. Um, yeah, and you're just always trying to advance. You're always trying to advance this relationship in your favor. Just to ask on that, like for ref script, so like yeah. if you want to do that, obviously if you want to use, like if you want to go inside, you know, slowly sneak in, sneak in, and otherwise slowly sneak out. They, they, both the lines work together. So if I want to top roll, I want depth as well, because the moves work together. Like from, if you top roll from a much deeper position, it's going to be more powerful. I, I want both. So go lines. in more for top roll? I, both, both. It's, if I want to hook, if I want top roll, it doesn't. Hand control is a complete package. Okay, you want both lines. Um, like to top roll like with a low and deep, I can still do it. I can still do it. So to top roll with like not a lot, but like right here, yeah, yeah. I can still do it, but it's just different. You just, any advancement that you can get is gonna help you. You want depth and you want height. And, and the way you do that is with the, these two ideas, right? The whole depth and height thing, I get height by making him chase me, right? If, he, if we're gonna take a grip, right, the more I run, the more I keep my thumb big, keep my thumb big and not let him get a grip, right? When I come to the table, if I want to achieve a higher thumb line, the first thing I do in any move I'm trying to do is I angle up and I lift my thumb very high. I put my arm on the table and as they approach, I run. And this is how you run in arm wrestling. You see your palm. You see your palm. It makes it harder to grip. All right, come on up. All right? Now I'm going to put my thumb down, okay? So take a grip. Pretty comfortable, right? Okay? All right? Now take a grip. All right, less comfortable, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. And that's just as simple as just opening your thumb because you have to drop lower down. Is right? It's almost, almost like a mini post type thing. It is. It is, yeah. Yeah, so like, so when you post up, there's like two lines that are important, right? There's, there's this line, this whole line, and then there's also your thumb line, yeah. okay? And, you, and you're, you're climbing both of them. You'll notice when you re-grip, right? Hit a top roll, right? You do this one, do this one. And they work together, right? These two lines are always coming up, over, up, over. Yeah, and you protect it, and the thing is they work together. Depth and height, they work together. When you think about, when you think about protecting, uh, protecting your thumb, come on up again, okay? I protect my thumb also with supination. So when he, when he goes to take a grip, 
right? Right, and the whole time I'll be like, elbow's gotta be on the pad, right? Elbow's always gotta be on the pad, right? Elbow down, elbow down, you can't take a grip like that, what are you doing? Right? <laughs> right, what are you doing? Right, and it'll just make him hard, to, but you see he's already chasing, right? Now, don't take a grip. Just be like, this is crazy, I'm not taking a grip. Okay, so somebody who doesn't take a grip, that's fine too. So he's either chasing me and that's cool, I'm playing that game, but if he's not chasing me, that's cool too. And then I'll just go past him and I'll start to, I'll start to carve down, okay? And notice when I do it, I'm not like really trying to get around because this is all gonna get pulled out, okay? I'm just going past, I'm going past and I'm carving down. Past, carving down. Wrist straight, right? Wrist straight. See the depth? I've got a lot of depth. All right, that's what I'm after, getting past the person. Making them chase or getting past. These two ideas, guys, that's always what you're after. Yeah. Play around a bit more. Yeah. Ask me anything, guys. I'll try, I'll try my best to convey. Uh, can we do that left hand side? Yeah. Um, something, uh, something you should be doing just all the time as arm wrestlers, like throughout the day, is just be checking, right? Like when I'm, like as an arm wrestler, like you know how people you see like a fighter and they're walking around like shadow boxing, like arm wrestle all the time. And when you're arm wrestling, you're you're in your set, right? Like all the time, I'm like, okay, tight, 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 tight. I just walk around, you know, getting tight all the time. Like I, I do, I do. I walk around my, every, 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 if I haven't done anything in five awesome. minutes, I'm probably gonna take my arm and just be like, you know? It's just part of like my routine. It's like part of my life, you know? And, and the things to think about, I, we've talked about shoulder forward, shoulder back, but talk about creation, destruction. Creation, destruction in the hand, right? Think creation, okay, creation, creation. See those three things, okay? Up, kick back, supinate. Up, kick back, supinate. These are all creative motions, okay? So like the most creative thing I can do, creative means like you set up your destruction, right? I walk around like this, right? I'm like, like this, like if I'm like a waiter, I'm kind of <laughs> too, too messed up now, I can't do it. But like, the more you can be like this, okay, the more it sets up everything to come over, <clears throat> right? So practice like the art of getting tight in all these motions, it's really important as an arm wrestler, right? So, so work these ranges, right? Get in your sets, right? And so that's creation, talk about destruction, right? Like it should be a goal of yours to be like, able to touch every finger to your wrist, right? You want to be able to really... <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is, like, you want to have that ability to get deep, right? Like, on the table, you want to be like an octopus, given the opportunity. Like, match stops, and you're with a guy who's strong, you want to build up your depth to that match, so they have to roll you out of the deepest spot imaginable, right? And the more you can practice your tightness, same thing with your palm, right? You want to be like, find that pronator and just be learning how to squeeze it and squeeze it. So when you get in your set, right, you can just develop those locks. We talk about, like I say, get tight. Like get tight, like, you know how yoga people want to get like open? I have no idea how they do it, <laughs> right? Like they want to like loosen. As arm wrestlers, like we want to learn the art of tightness. Like we want to be able to compress our bodies in our locks so that they just have a deeper, like we want to be able to be deeper. Um, a lot of people only get this deep, but they're really strong. So whatever you got, you want to make strong, but if you have the ability to get deeper too, it just increases the range to which you have to be open. Yeah. And, and another just super simple thing is like, we talk about the sandboxes that we play in. We talk about the leads, we talk about the tables. Uh, ultimately, just always know that every handshake is an opportunity to arm wrestle, right? <laughs> and every time I meet an arm wrestler, you know, like hand on the shoulder, right? Hand on my shoulder, right? I, I've done this probably more 
then I've done this. Thank you for okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Every chance you get, like, like uh, I mean, there's been times when I've gone months without a table, and I've just done this. And I'm telling you, it's really no different. You really don't need a table, all right? Just a tiny little thing. Who's got more, Steve? Right, it's important to get to <laughs> he's, he's got to go. Quickly, just take it. Take yeah. He's got to go. We'll just leave it up there. Yeah, You're here. Yeah. 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 Hang it off. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Good one. All right. <laughs> See you. Thanks. See you soon. Good times. Yeah.